Hey, Angelina, just to let you know, we're ready to go whenever you want us to. So we'll just stand by. Okay, so it's now nine. Well, my time, 9 a.m. So hi, everyone. My name is Angeline, and I'm from Caterpillar Asia. Today, we have our two experts from, Ms. from Caterpillar, Mr. Chris Barrett and Mr. Felix Stocko, who will be presenting on CAD 3D Advance. Over to you, Chris and Felix. No problems. Thanks, Angeline. Good morning. Good morning and good afternoon to all and welcome to our second session of CAT Grade with 3D where we're referencing the CAT Grade, CAT grade with 3D Operator and Site Manager Quick Reference Guide for Next Gen Machines which you can see up there on the screen. This is available to everyone. So my name is... My name is Felice Stocko. Um, Angeline, we might want to just put everyone on mute. I'm not sure if that's going to cut us out, but I can hear some other stuff coming through there. My name is Felice Stocko, and I'm in Systems Application for Caterpillar of Australia. And together with Chris Barrett, who's our Technology Application Specialist, we're looking forward to sharing some time with you all here today. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone online that this is being recorded. I'd also like to ask that you just take a moment to check your own surroundings for safety, whether you're at home, whether you're in an office, or whether you're driving. So please just take a moment to check the safety around you. I'll give you a couple of seconds there to just check that. Thanks. Hey, Felicia, I'm going to um, mute again because some people just joined. So I'm just going to mute all and then you have to unmute, yeah? Hi. Okay, we're back on again here now. So hopefully you've checked all your surroundings and making sure that you are all safe. So I'd like to welcome Chris Barrett. Good morning, Felice. How are you? Good. How are you? Going what, well. What machine are we going to be operating today, Chris? So today, uh, Felice, we're going to be in a next-gen dozer. So last time we did this session, we are in an excavator. Today we're going to jump into an excavator, I mean a tractor. <laughs> a dozer, okay, I can see I can see the smile on all our dozer operators out there right now. So whilst you're using the dozer, I'd, I'd like, I think it's important to mention that the CAT grade with 3D technology is identical across the machine fleet, right, Chris? Correct. So that's one good thing about the CAT grade with 3D system for each, whether you're in a motor grader, uh, an excavator or a track top tractor, it's a common platform. Um, for the guys that have dialed in that own excavators or operate excavators, you'll notice today I have the screen in a portrait um, landscape. We can have this uh, orientated either way, depending on your machine type. So the same features are there. It's just for a tractor, we have this in the landscape mode. Fantastic. So can you just give us an idea of what we're actually going to be going through here today, please, Chris? Yeah, sure. So last time... We covered off some of the basics of getting started, how to set up some of your preferences, units, um, some basics in the system. One of the tools that's probably underutilised or a lot of people want a little bit more training on is the infield design capability. So today for each, um, we're going to run through infield designs um, using some features in there like lane guidance and points, some of the features we've added in recently. Okay, so whilst... Whilst you're getting set up there, Chris, I should point out that he's actually not in a next-gen dozer, but using a cat grade with 3D simulator that is on his laptop. So for all of you customers that's out there, this actually is available on an Android device. And also for our dealers that have joined us here today, welcome to you all. Welcome to you all. So Chris, I can see you're on the system dashboard there. So can you just give us a quick recap of what these four tiles mean, please. Sure. So again, as you open up the CAT grade application, this is the landing page that we get. So quick run through. Today, we're going to be using the machine in um, GPS mode or GNSS mode. So we first of all want to make sure that we've got the right positioning source. So again, coming in here, making sure that we're not in 2D mode today, we're going to be running dual GNSS on the, on the, on the dozer. Correction source, we've got this off a local UHF base station today. So that's where you would go in and check your base station if we wanted to make those changes. Next one across here is the system status. So again, it's going to look at all the components on the machine as part of that grade system. And we're happy here today for each. We're seeing green ticks. Everything's connected, ready to go. 
I'll do a quick check of that left hand receiver, which is the one talking to the base station. And we're in RTK mode, so we're good to go start building designs and, and working with great guidance. So that's just a quick recap of those four tiles on your main work screen. Let's stay on that main work screen, Chris, and let's uh, simulate depth and slope with the dozer on a road project. Right. So if I come into that job setup tile for each, at the moment I have a design loaded. So a 3D design that's been created in the office. What we're going to do now is change the mode. So design mode is, again, that design you either load in via USB or if you're using um, the connected community, you can send the design to the machine. First of all, we're going to get into depth and slope mode and show you what that can do. Quickly point out for each again, for the people that didn't join in last time, whenever you see the blue shaded um, icon there, that's the most logical button that we're wanting you to press. So after we've changed the setting, hitting blue 99% of the time, that's the button that you want to get to. So we're in depth and slope mode now for each. We can go straight ahead into our work screen. All right, so I can see orange around the screen with the caption bench heading required. So I'm assuming that you need to do this. You, you couldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to go any further, right? That's right. So within this system, for each, whenever you see an orange um, boundary around the work screen, that's normally giving you a warning or asking for an action. So this first one in depth and slope mode is asking you to bench heading. So essentially what that means, the way the bulldozer is facing the same direction as the tracks, that's the heading. So if we're happy with the position of that tractor, and we want to use that as our heading. Again, we zoom over to that blue button, press that once, and it's going to give us a heading for the depth and slope. Again, it's still got that orange um, boundary around there for each asking me for another step, and we've got that blue icon over there, so it's telling us to bench elevation. So elevation, we could either move the tractor blade up and down to get the elevation we need. Um, if we're on a job site, we want to look at our 3D position, we can easily do that by scrolling across and looking at our elevation if we had to start at a known point. Um, I'll quickly demonstrate that. So just by moving that blade up and down, that's going to change your elevation. Or if we're just putting an arbitrary point, we've uh, rocked up on a job site, we need to put a landing pad where the workshop's going to go, and we just put the blade on the ground and said, here is where we want to start. I just hit that blue button and now we've got our depth and slope with a heading and a bench, and we're ready to go build a flat pad. Excellent. So now that you've done that, why don't, why don't we take it another step further? So let's get into perhaps setting a main fall and a cross slope. Um, what can we use as an example here? Give us a, let's look up a 5% main fall and perhaps a 6% cross slope. Sure. So when we first come into depth and slope for each, by default, when we do that bench heading or bench um, elevation, it's going to give us a level cross slope and main fall, which you can see up here. So if I'm going to change that, so this one here, side profile of the dozer blade, that's our main fall. So I'll press and hold on there. I can come in, and if we want to adjust this, in the tractor itself, when you press and hold this, it'll bring up a little keyboard, but I'm just using the keyboard on my machine. So you said a 5% slope for each? Yep. You can see, again, on the left where we've got this picture of the blade, by toggling positive or minus, that's going to give us the direction. So sloping downhill from the dozer or you're going up a hill. So we can have that pushing downhill, which is the better way to go. So that's our main fall. And you can see now quickly to make sure that's the right way. If I move that dozer up there, you can see that it's definitely a main fall downhill. We're getting now to the cross slope. So again, we've got it defaulted on level. And you want a 6% for each. Correct. And I'll leave that one in the positive direction. Again, I could toggle that around. The good thing about using depth and slope, when you've got your GNSS connected, um, turning the machine around, spinning in any direction, it's going to remember where that is, and you're good to go. So uh, we got a bit of feedback last week. We had some mixture of experienced and inexperienced operators. So obviously the experienced operators realise that it's a touch screen and they know what comes up. So for those operators out there that are inexperienced, you're touching a mouse here on your simulator. What are they going to see when they touch the screen? Yeah, so they're just using their finger, hovering over where my mouse is, and pressing and hold. So you get a feel for the screen. Pressing and hold at one to two seconds will bring up that menu. Excellent. Thanks for that. So, again, a bit of feedback from last week. I was being asked, why did we reference the cranky foreman? Well, there's cranky foremans out there everywhere, right? So this week we're going to say we've got a very happy foreman. 
And he's actually asking, or he's hassling me to put an elevation offset in, which I'm assuming can be done whilst you're in depth and slope mode. It can. So not only benching to get your elevation for each, if you're going to be putting some gravel over this workshop area um, where you're building on the job site, again, coming up to that elevation, we can put in, say we want to put a 100 mil offset on there, so we just can put 0.1. Again, using that toggle function, that's going to put that above. If I want to go 100 mil below, there it is there. What we discovered last time, if this is going to be a common feature that you're going to be doing all the time, going 100 mil below, we can just quickly add favourite. So if we want to always have that 0.1 below, we can have that as a favourite and we can still use that in depth and slope mode. So I'm going to apply that now and I'll demonstrate that to you. So we've gone down 0.1. So rather than pressing and holding and going in and changing all the time, you can set up a multitude of favourites just by toggling. That'll give you that offset. So if you're layering material um, on a D6 or any of our next-gen tractors, you can do this on the joystick, which is a great feature, or tap that screen once and that's going to give you that elevation change. Excellent. So I see that you've created a simple design here. So how do we get into something a little more complex, such as uh, a drain uh, or a slope? Sure. So rather than just doing a simple main fall, so this, what we've done here for it just goes on forever. So there's no boundaries to the end of this design. So wherever I drive that tractor, I'm going to have that 5%, 6% cross fall main fall. I'm just going to turn that back to zero. So we're dead level again. And like you said, we'll come in and we'll do, do a nice drain to get the water off this job site. Pressing and holding on level, you can see here where this yellow is highlighted under slopes. If I slide that over to put that on sections, this gives me the ability to do that more advanced design. So I'm going to come in here to memories and I'm going to build a new profile that we have here. So I'm going to go to add. I'm going to come up with a couple of options of how you want to do this. And today we're just going to do it on screen. Focus point is using the focus point of where you have that on the tractor. So you could actually physically drive the machine, whether it's an excavator, grader or, or dozer, to those points, record them, and that will build your profile. So we're just going to use on screen today. First one's our starting point, which is blue. And I'm just going to drag this across for each. We'll build a bit of a bit of a profile here. So again, on the actual machine, on the TD520D, we would just press and hold and slide across. Correct. So if we want to build a nice strain with a bit of a batter on top, I can bring that down. One of the features here is easy to just drag and drop with your finger on the screen, but if you want to have a more exact profile, we can come over and we can edit this. So if we wanted that to be 3.5 metres and we wanted that slope to be um, maybe not so deep, maybe let's make it 30%, that'll change that as we go through. So this little icon up the top, we can either edit the point and go by kind of coordinates or we can edit the line so that's what we've changed there now so we've got a three and a half meter line coming down from that top surface um, and then we can go from there i want to just extend that out a little bit more maybe put um put a slight slope on that of two percent and make that negative so the water runs downhill and we'll make that again a nice even three meters so now that water's going to have a nice spot in the middle to drain off the leach so this is only half the drain. So I've got a bit of a rise up the top there. I've come down into the middle. But if I want to easily do that and replicate it, I don't have any constraints on the job site, just by mirroring from the end of that design, I've now drawn my profile. So if I can zoom out a little bit here, that's the simple profile that I've just drawn. So if I save that one, select the one that I want to choose, which is section two. This one here is important for each. This is saying, where do I want the dozer to start with this design or where do I want to place that design underneath the dozer? So using these arrow keys here, I can just simply toggle across and I'll start right in the middle of that drain. I'll hit apply and there we have it. There's our, there's our design that we've created. Um, so we've got a V drain. The only thing is now for each, this won't let the water run off. So if we wanted to make the water again run downhill, come in, we are 2% fall away from the dozer, so we're pushing downhill, and, and there's our slope. So nice and simple, a big straight V drain that goes on for a, goes on forever. Nice one, nice one. So are there other ways 
we can build a design with this tool, perhaps something a little bit more complex, like a, maybe what, what would our customers be using it there, like a ramp, something like that. Yep, sure, Felix. Again, I'll just put this back to, back to zero. Coming back to that home screen, so coming up to the, the cat grade, I'll come back into our job setup. So we used depth and slope mode. To explain designs, the, the model you get from the office. The other one we have in here is infield designs. So similar to depth and slope, we can do some basic um, designs in here, or we can get a bit more creative and build our own design. So at the moment, we're still on that motorway project, so it's using that local um, base station and system and coordinates that we have from that project. I'm going to go down into designs, and if I've got one created already, I can select that or I can build a new one. It comes up with three options here. So we've got new, new level, new slope, a new alignment and section. So we'll go through all of these. These were features we actually had in the older cat grade control system when we had the CB460 screen. So these first two here, new level, new slope, we've brought that back on, on recent software updates. So if I'm going to go new level, this is a nice easy one for each. If you're on the job site, you just need to level a pad. Um, again, that goes on forever. You just Use the elevation of your of your tractor. You hit the here key. That's that current elevation. And I'll show you that again on the machine. If I move, if I move the blade up and down. I hit that here key. If I want to go a little bit lower. You can see you can change that value. I could actually enter a manual value in there too, just to fine tune that to a, a site peg or a reference. I hit save. I select that design. I'm going to apply that one. Notice that blue button constantly pops up as the most favourable choice. So there's our new level. And you can see, for each, I don't have the option to put a main fall or cross slope on this one. It's just one big flat pad. I can keep your foreman happy by putting an elevation offset on that if I need to. So, for each, you asked me about something a bit more complex. I'll show you the two, the two other methods in there. Please do. All right, so back in infields again. I'm going to go down to designs and hit create. So this time I'm going to do new slope. So this might be a simple, something like a simple road or say in an agricultural application, you're following an existing um, irrigation line or you've got a, a ramp in the quarry and you want to go start here, finish there for setting up slot dozing. Anything you want to do with this one, it's a really handy tool. So again, we're just going to hit that blue button to get our first elevation. Actually going to get in the tractor and I'm going to drive forward. And I'm going to lower the blade down. That's going to be my finishing point of where we are. So that's our first point. Oh, smooth operating skills there, Chris. Look very impressive. Thank you, Felice. So we've got our two points. So this is just basically an AB line or a string line between those two points. We can keep it simple as that if we want a flat pad. Or if it was a ramp, like we're saying, you want to have cross slope, so water runs off either side. We can get more creative here and come in and say we want to have a 3% fall on either side or whatever we choose. Make that a negative. Might make that a little bit more steep so people can see, see the slope that we have. And I could use these toggles here if I wanted to edit further. I'm going to go next. That's our new slope. I'm going to select him and apply. And we're ready to go. So that you can see there for each one to bring that down. That's the cross slope. We used two points on the machine and away we went. New slope one, new level one. Yes. Can you go in there and show us how to edit those and perhaps give them a name? Sure. So again, pressing and holding, coming back in, we hit the designs. So we can call this um, customized names or we can delete them. So we've got other ones here. If I want to edit or delete, I'll go into the new slope as you just suggested. I'm going to edit that one there. Say we thought that cross slope was a little bit too steep. We can come back in and say we want to make that uh, minus 4%. Or we want this one to be, be 4. Um, with the name, we can call this uh, police's ramp. So we can call that whatever we want to leave. So we can come back. We know we know exactly what we're up to. <laughs> You've named the ramp after me. Thanks very much. I always wanted my own site. Right. The other one for each, which is 
takes the most getting used to using this feature, but it's a very powerful tool. If you're on a job, you need to drain some water off um, and you have to build a bit more of a complex infield design. So the next one here we've got is alignment and sections. That com that's a combination of you know, using the depth and slope and you know, recording points with the machine. So I'll step through that one now. I'll go through points later. So if we came to a job site, say you're in a, in a tractor and you're sort of trammed all the way down a ramp and you wanted to build a design, recording points is where this would come into favour. Again, I'm just going to use the focus point on the, on the dozer today for each. So it gives us here, again, that blue button to take the first point. And this is referencing off the cutting edge where you have that focus point selected. So I'm going to be actually doing some more driving in my tractor today for each. So I'll put the blade up and I'll drive him forward. Go up a gear. I'll take another point. You can see I've got that dotted line where I've actually driven to. So this is a good one if you have to plot around surfaces. So I'm actually going to turn, turn now, sort of head off in this direction. I'll take the point there. I can not drive off the motorway. I'll play it up a little bit higher. So that's where I want to finish. So what this has done here for Leach is basically a bird's eye view or a plan view of those points. And that could go on for as many points as I want to take. If you're trying to go around a curve in something like a motor grader, the more points you take, the better that is. So that's the plan view. Next one is elevation. So we've got an elevation change. Again, if that doze was on undulating ground or going up or downhill, it's going to report that point as where that was in the elevation. I wanted to smooth that out and have one big, nice ramp between these two points here. I just hit that little button there and that smooths the elevation out. So from start to finish now, I've got a nice consistent elevation. So if I was on a little bit of bumpy ground, we're not going to get any pools of water in this, um, in this ramp or road we just designed. This part is the section. So like we did before in depth and slope mode, I'm just going to go on screen and do another bit of a profile here for Leach. Just going to do this nice and quick. When you're using the screen, you'll get a bit of a feel for the time it takes to press and hold. So again, if I press and hold, it'll go yellow. And that means I can edit an existing point. If I click it once and move it quickly, that's how I can edit those points. Again, I'll put that one across there. I'll put a slope on him of minus 1%. It goes downhill. And I'm going to mirror from end. And that's the profile we've created. What it does here, for each, is gives me a view of that design in 3D. So I'm not going to put anyone in the office um, building highways out of work with this simple tool, but it's really handy um, just to build a quick ramp, build a pad, get that water offside or for drains, Using this system when you don't have a full 3D model, that's really handy. But the other one here for Leach is you can see we've got these little A and B at the end. So rather than wearing my undercarriage out um, and travelling all over the job site, if I know I want this design to go on for an extended period of time, I can actually put on, on either end of this design, add in a further distance we want that to extend out. So again, if you're coming up, to a culvert and you can't drive the dozer over something, you can just extend that out when you get to that point. So a nice little feature we have. The other one here for each is like we did before, is selecting where do you want this design placed under the tractor. Really good feature is when you're building this, when you use that feature of mirroring from the end, and spin that round, I want to start in that centre. So by moving this around, I can go, all right, my dozer is going to start in the centre of that design and then I'm good to go. Again, I can name this again, so I'll keep up the tradition. We can come back to that at any time and I know where that is. I'll select that one there. Hit apply. And there's the ramp we built for each. And you position the dozer right in the middle. Yes. 
do you have a quick option now to move that dose or do you have to go back? Uh, I can. So good thing is with this design, so I can I can spin the dose around 180 degrees and get to work. So if I turn him around here, I'll move him around on the pad. And we are ready to go start building. Excellent, great design. Thanks for showing us that. Why don't we, well, that was excellent that we got to go to see some of those features. Why don't we run through some of the other features within the design, uh, such as the icons on the screen. So uh, on this dozer, it's on the right hand side of the screen, obviously in the excavator, it's gonna be at the bottom of the screen. Yes. So I believe we're gonna be going through, what do we got there? Focus points, points and lane guidance. Can you just run us through those three, please? Sure. So first up for each, again, you'll notice we've got this other item in the middle, which is horizontal um, offset. So important one, if we were wanting to do a really nice, neat job on this, on this road, um, by selecting an alignment, we can now do that for from the infield design we created. So if we wanted to have an offset um, from the centre there, we want to be knowing when we're right on that design, it's going to give us horizontal guidance um, if we turn that on from that point. So that's a nice handy tool if you're doing trenching um, or, or building the corner of a road or extending a line out from a footpath to give you an actual guidance offset. So I'll show you how to um, actually turn on the light bar so we can get some horizontal guidance there. So we've got the left and right cut fills. Now we're going to turn on the center. And you can see from where we're referencing that line we selected where we're basically really close. We can come across and say we're three centimeters offline so we can drive nice and straight. Good enough for my ramp, mate. Yep. So you wanted to go through some of these other features for each? I'll load up another just plain model from the office, which is what most people would be using. So I'll come across back into that job setup. Switch back, back into design mode. We've got a, a road project here we're working on. I'll load that one up. I'll load that system back up just because we've changed design. This is normal for it to take a minute for getting its coordinate system back and run through some of the features in there. While she's loading up, Chris, I'm, I'm getting some messages coming across saying, how come I'm positioned inside a dozer screen here, but yet I'm not doing any operating? Isn't that fun? This is the easiest way to operate, isn't it? That's right. Well, speaking about that, for each our, our next-gen uh, dozers actually support remote control. So in this environment where we might have to work from home, uh, you can buy a new D6 and plug in a kit and drive it from home. So we're, we're thinking of that for you, for each. And someone else has also reminded me that I'm actually facing the wrong way. Maybe this is a backhoe version of a dozer. <laughs> yes. All right. So... Let's go through these um, these items on the side here. So this is a focus point. So if we look at this here, you can see that little red dot. I'll see if I can zoom in on this, this page and I'll spin my dose around. So that's our focus points. So that's where we're getting our, our left cut fill value from. If we wanted to work off the right hand side, which we do in a tractor because we have the seat facing that direction, um, you can see now we've just changed, we're working off that focus point. The other one we have here is this green line in the middle, and that's what our vertical guidance point is. So when we're using automatics, and we have it set up as it is today on this machine, we're reading between that focus point and that green vertical bar. So that's where we're getting our automatics on. If we wanted to change that, if we were doing something very complex where there's a lot of design line transition and the, the machine's trying to you know, cut off the top of a crown. We have an option in here for Leach. It's going into advanced options. And we can change where this vertical guidance is. So at the moment we have it in center, which on 90% of the time on a motor grader or a tractor is where you want to have it. The other one we've added in is linked to focus. So now if I apply that there, you can see that vertical guidance and that focus point are together. So if I'm I'm doing a culvert or a drain, moving that there, that's going to give me guidance without that blade trying to tilt down and um, top, chop off the top of that crown. So I'll change that one back, but that's some advanced features in there. Um, again, centre's the one we, we recommend to run with for most projects. We're an attractor today for each. The other one we can do is come in and change our cutting edge wear. As they wear down and you're doing that daily check that we mentioned last time off a reference point, um, you can come in and adjust your cutting edge where either side of the blade, which is 
a new feature with the cat grade with 3D um, to keep the machine nice and accurate. All right, so I'll apply that one there. So that's the focus points we've got there. Again, these messages that pop up are normal. As we've changed something on the machine, it's recalculating its position. So that's OK, we'll pop out. When it asks us to initialize sensors on a tractor, it's just asking us to move the blade up and down to know that it's ready to go and we're all connected. Next one here for each that is down the list is record points. So I'll just move back over to the left hand focus point. And we've got a couple of options here. By pressing this once um, on the screen, it'll just record a point. But again, say you were on a, on a job for each and you came across a existing utility. It might have been a cable that's no longer connected, or it might be an old water main. Um, if you're driving along, you come across something on site, you know there's going to be a lot of fill come in and go over that area, but you want to get back to it. We can we can come in here and name this. So I might say uh, telecom line old. So we've done dial before we dig. Um, we can save that to a work order. So this is this work order piece we'll get to in a second. This is where you can record the points as a group so you can get those back in the office. Um, we could put a code on this, so it might be the station on the job of how far along that is if you wanted to reference that, and it'll give you the position. You can see we've even labelled that on there now, Philippe, so you can see the old telecom line. If people are asking, hey, on my screen, I'm recording points, but I don't see the text, if we come up to this layer function here, this gives us the ability to show um, different things on, on the design. So we can actually turn the machine off again, more for excavators if you're digging out a, a culvert or a basement. Um, if you don't want those focus points in, you're just doing bulk earthworks, you didn't want to see those. Or in the points, we can say what we want to record there. And the crosshairs, which helps you when you're building your designs for your, for your heading um, direction. So I've got that there now, for which I've recorded the old telecom line, and there's going to be some 745s dumping or to fill here soon, so I better get out of the way. Um, if I had to move the machine and come back to it and find that point again, we've actually got a feature in here is um, navigate to points. So by pressing and holding on the screen with the points, we can actually go back and find those points. So if I just do another one there, we'll save. And then by pressing and holding on the line here, um, that'll allow us to sort of navigate back to that point. So really handy feature to get back to those points when, when you need to. I'm seeing that we've got another point on the screen there, Chris. Might have been from previous sessions. It, it was. That was one that was with the, with the dealers for each. That's got my name on it. So I'm in the dozer behind you, uh, and I'm working off the same design. So am I going to be able to see these on my screen? Yes, that's a good question, Fleet. So if you've got your machine hooked up to that connected community, these points will go back into the office. If they're recalculated in, in the business centre tool or the software package, you can send those back out. So again, if you're in the office, you want to know that we've uncovered something, um, that'll pop back up. The next one I'll show you, Fleet, is the lane guidance. And a lot of people want to know how this feature is used and where you'd use that. So a really good one to look at here is the cross section over on my left hand side. So what lane guidance does, it, it's another way of calling it is line extension. So say we we're building this motorway for each and we had some bulk earthworks to do and we didn't want the dozer following this contour. So as it's going down, he just wants to take a nice big one metre cut down before he gets anywhere near final trim. That's where lane guidance comes in. And so again, we come in and we have that plan view of the machine. And if we want to select a line, so we've got our master alignment, so we're going to select one line here. We're going to go across over here. I might even go the other way on this one, Felice. Oh, I'll just open that simulator again. So plenty of plenty of options there to go through. So just to repeat just a couple of those items that you've gone through, and these are the features that would be on the right side of that TD520. So that was focus points you initially showed us. Then you went into points. Uh, and then now we're actually currently in lane guidance. How are we going there, Chris? Ready to go again? Yeah, just using a simulator here for each, and some of these advanced features um, sometimes get a little tricky. So the old on again, off again? The old on again, off again. All right, so I've selected one line there. We'll try this again. I'll select that one over there. I think we're good now. We'll hit apply. 
done exactly what I wanted it to do. So we've picked two lines on that job, and you can see that dotted line we have in there for each. That's the existing design. Right. But just by toggling on and off, um, I can easily do my main bulk earthworks, get down to that first area I want to get to, and then once I'm down to that level, I can turn off lane goal guidance and get back to following the existing design. So handy feature on, on road projects or another example might be a footpath. Um, say the dozer of blade width is much wider than a footpath, but you want to use your automatics, extend, pick either side of that footpath, extend it out, do your automatics, turn it back off and away you go. So there's a lot of nice little features in there. So effectively you're extending the surface using lane guidance, right? Correct. Yep. Footpath. Excellent. So I believe we have a fourth one there, Chris, we're going to get into being mapping. Mapping. And I'll, I'll demonstrate this for each in plan view. So again, quickly to change the view that I'm looking at on the screen, I'm just going to go to plan view, which we covered off last time. So mapping is a really nice feature. If you, example might be you're, you're doing, uh, you're cleaning out a dam and you've come back the next day and you want to see where did I get to? Um, you know, where did I get to on grade? There's some advanced mapping features here. We can actually even load in with the design um, an existing surface image. So you could have the existing surface that something like a drone surveyed. You could have the design that's come from the office, and then you can see where the machine's been to give you a really good picture of how much more material you've got to go. So we're just going to use here, we're going to turn on the mapping data, which we can have on or off, and we're going to use the, use the motorway or use the ground surface. We can choose either way. Reset the map as if you came in and you wanted to start again. We're going to get back in and might reset the map so we've got a clean view there for each. So it's nice and clean and fresh for everyone. We hit reset. Yes. Hit apply. And you can see that mapping's gone. So now if I get in the tractor and I'll go for a bit of a drive and I'll lower that blade down, we're a little bit close up. As I drive along, I'll move this out to the other side. You can see when I'm on grade, it's going to give me a nice shade of green. When I'm too high or too low, it's going to give me a cut value. So if I'm going to dig the blade in, it's going to give me, hey, you've gone too far, that's the fill. As I come up, back on green, and I've got a bit of a fill there. So again, nice feature. Um, good to sort of know where you've been. We're adding more capability this, to, again, to your point, for each to share that data back with the machine. Um, other machines on the site. Fantastic. I actually thought you're a little bit better operated than that, Chris. I'm a little bit disappointed seeing you cut too deep there. Tell me about mapping. Does this work with data back in the office? It does. So if you have a VisionLink 3D subscription, this data will come back and be displayed within VisionLink. So we call it a, a tag file. And you can see if we zoom in there for each, you've got these little grids. So what that actually does is every, um, you know, kind of a square centimetre area, that sort of records that area it's been and it sends that back over. So some applications, it's really handy to have that data, some jobs not required. So that subscription is optional, but if you do need it on some jobs, it, it is there if you need it. Excellent, thanks for that, Chris. So in summary today, what we've gone through is we've gone through uh, depth and slope mode, infield designs and using points. Um, Angeline, I'd, I'd, I'd ask if you could unmute the phones, if anyone has, has a question out there, please don't hesitate to just yell out and we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. So whilst, perhaps while Angeline is just unmuting those phones, Chris, I'd like to ask a question in reference to a record point. Yes. Uh, what are some um, of the Hang on, Felice, sorry. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you there, right there. I can't unmute, um, so the everyone has to unmute themselves. I don't have the ability to unmute all. But okay. I did have a question on the chat function. Yes. There was a question. So the question is, does this system have a blade on ground feature? Yes, it does. So I'm not sure when the question was asked, but the mapping, that works like the blade on ground. So whether we're using the ground surface, which is basically um, for people that have used the old system, track mapping, that's that ground surface. So we do have a blade on ground feature in CAT grade with 3D. Thanks for that, Angeline. So again, if you do want to uh, ask a question, just unmute yourself and we'd be more than happy to take your questions. So Chris, perhaps while we're waiting for questions to come through, I uh, just ask again in reference to ground point, what are some of the applications where this can be used? Yeah, so 
Think of, um, think of again, we'll use a dam as an example for each and say it's, um, you know, it might be a tailings dam where you don't want uh, surveyors going in there with the rover. Using record point in the cab of the machine, you're basically using the dozer as a rover or the excavator, what that might be. So we could use these record points. Um, we could actually come in here and call this you know, uh, finish surface of dam floor. We have a folder that we can put all these points in so you're not just getting a lot of points come back in. We'll hit save on that one there. And if I again drive my dose around, take a few points, that'll save it to that folder. So if I've done the bottom surface of that machine, those coordinates come back. So just if a good example is if you don't want surveyors in a certain part of the job, it might be a steep slope, might be something like a tailings dam, really good application to use, use record points. Excellent. Any questions out there? Right. Uh, perhaps perhaps one more from me then, Chris. Um, in, our, um, in our last session, we were asked about VCL designs. Can you give us a demonstration using this file format, please? Yes. So one of the features we introduced with CAT Grade 2.0, which we released at uh, around Con Expo timing, is the support of VCL file format. So for people that are using uh, Trimble Business Center as their um, office software to build the designs, VCL is the natural file format from Trimble Business Center. So one of the um, additions we've added here is rather than having a design for say your drainage, one for your road, one for the subgrade, within VCL, you can now have all those um, elements of the design or the project in the one design file. So we do have a, an example here for each on the simulator, so site BCL. And you can see here it's brought up a few more options. So with the design, we've got BCL design, and we can select the surface. So before, if we're using the traditional file format, we would have all this within separate designs. So now we can have this in, um, in the one file and we can change that. So if I'm just gonna go um, the full site, I'm gonna hit apply, this is gonna load up, being a big file, it'll take a second to load. It'll pop back up on the machine. And that'll give us the ability to press and hold and view the design and then turn on and off the features we want. So again, this is just a VCL file format. Um, looks the same, but if we press and hold on the screen, you can see now we've got some additional options. So if we wanted to change the surface, or have a reference surface. So say you've got a, a road and a footpath or um, doing a subdivision and you've got your drain lines that you wanted to reference to where they are. This gives us the ability to give us a reference surface. And if we wanted to reference the V-ditch, we can apply that and that will show up on the design. Same with the line work for leach. If you say, hey, there's too much line work on this project. I only want to see select lines. We can come in and turn off the other lines. So you can only concentrate on the ones at hand. So you can turn off a lot of the line work there and we'll clean up the design. So good good question, nice feature. Excellent, any questions out there? Because if not, we'll probably just wrap this up. Give you a chance if you want to reach out and ask us a question. The, the other one for each as we're waiting for those questions is for anyone who didn't dial in last time, the help menu and a lot of these features, the things we've covered today, those three little dots that gives, gives us a really good inbuilt help menu of using things like infield designs, recording points, transferring the files. Um, nice handy feature we've got built in there. Um, so you can get started and work. Fantastic, thanks for that, Chris. And I just checked online, there's no other questions there. So we'll wrap this up. I wanna thank you, Chris. Uh, excellent demonstration of the simulator there and operator skills probably five out of ten we need to get you with some of the experienced <laughs> operators to help you with that i want to personally on behalf of myself and chris and angeline thank our customers that have taken the time out of their day to dial in we got a lot of feedback last week from the customers that did dial in if you have some other things that you would like us to concentrate on in future sessions please don't hesitate to reach out to your dealer reps who will promptly get the feedback back to either myself being for leech or chris barrett so 
once again, I'd like to thank everybody that dialed in today. Angeline, thanks for organising. Chris, thank you again. Thanks our customers and thanks to our dealers. Bye-bye. Thank you, Felice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.